it's, it's got texture. Definitely has texture. Hello there, and welcome to another tasting of Icelandic beer. Uh, this time, we have this. It's a uh, Viking or Viking. Uh, it's Juniper Bach. This is from Akureyri. Uh, this is a brewery in Akureyri, which is uh, the largest town in the north of Iceland. It's very small by most standards, uh, but it is the largest one up there. And um, and this is actually not. This is a um, a macro brewery. This is one of the two major breweries in Iceland, called Viking or Viking, and. Um, they, if if you watched my previous video, I, I, uh, I tasted a beer from Bork, which is a like a microbrewery that's run within a macrobrewery, but uh, this is just a macrobrewery. They, um, you know, they produce their huge, you know, light lager type beers in the huge cellars under the same name, uh, but this they call their craft selection so you know they're they're doing uh, interesting things with this craft selection and uh you know a lot of these beers are really really enjoyable uh i haven't tasted this one yet uh as i did last time if you watched my previous video uh, i i'm just doing this very blindly just going for it so we'll see what happens again i haven't tasted this before I want to read you the text at the back of the bottle, which is something I should have probably done last time. You live and you learn. Um, but this has a interesting, an interesting text, and it's all in English. So. Uh, in battle, the Vikings carried colorful round shields, marvelously decorated with images of a tribal coat of arms or a token animal. On their long excursions across the seas, the Vikings would line their shields along the side of the ship to cover themselves from the cold wind and splashes as they rode. I'm sure they did. I don't know what that has to do with this. Is it the... Are these the shields? I have no idea what this has to do with uh, with the thing. Uh, I don't know. Just like the Viking shields, Juniper Bach has a colorful and vivid character. Oh, that's the connection. <laughs> Alright. Uh, it's a strong lager inspired by the ancient Viking brewing tradition of using juniper for flavoring. Yeah, they probably didn't brew a uh, box, though. Munich malt provides smooth malt backbone, whereas wheat and oat malt increase fullness and body. The taste is caramelly, with slight sweetness, and balanced by delicate juniper herbal notes. Herbal, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's 6.2% ABV, and... Um, yeah, it contains all the usual stuff, but like they said, you know, it's pure Icelandic water is specified here, which every beer brewed in Iceland contains. Uh, malted barley, oats, wheat, Icelandic juniper berries, and hops. So this is going to be very interesting. I'm going to open this up, pour it into my glass. I'm using the same glass as last time, which was brand specific at that point, but it's not now. I'm, this is a glass from their competitor, so... Take that brewery. I just cleaned my glass, so uh, it should be should be very free of any, any grease or uh, whatever. And you know, this is probably not the glass that you would normally drink a Bach from. I don't care. I I've been accused of being a beer snob and a beer pervert and whatever. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I'm not that big of a snob when it comes to glasses. I want a nice glass, but I don't care. I, I can drink a wheat beer out of a, out of a, you know, this kind of glass or a stout from a wheat beer. I don't care as long as the glass is nice and clean. I don't really care what kind of glass it is. Uh, there are differences in how you perceive the aroma, so they say. I don't know. This is a bit too big of a hassle for me. I just grab whatever class I feel like at the time, and I don't think too much about it. Anyway, the appearance, hopefully, you can see it, yeah, I mean, it's it's quite cloudy. Uh, you, can see, you can see the reflection of my 
my computer screen there. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's quite cloudy. It's um, it's amber colored, I guess. Um, and um, yeah, the head is decent. Not the glazing isn't great, but it's there. And it definitely smells like a Bach. Um, multi, uh, multi smell, um, you know, caramel. Uh, juniper, I guess. Yeah, but it's subtle. Um, I'm not getting a lot of hop character from this, as you probably wouldn't in a Bach. Although it depends. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't get a lot of juniper, and I, I am, uh, I am quite familiar with the taste of juniper because uh, for Christmas every year we make uh, a game thing. There's a there's a bird that is very popular to hunt in Iceland called ptarmigan, it's with a silent p at the beginning, ptarmigan, um, and it's it's like a small type of hen or something it's not if you look look at the uh the bird raw bird it's a little bit similar it looks a little bit similar to pheasant but without the big thing the big tail um and uh, yeah people go out into the mountains with shotguns and shoot these uh, little birds it's very dark meat uh, you know it's almost when, when you look at it once you've uh, uh, taking the skin off the bird, it almost looks purple. Anyway, it's great eating. Um, and uh, me and my family, we have this for Christmas every year. And it's spiced with juniper. So it's, uh, it's a spice that I am quite familiar with. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can't say I get, I get a little bit of it on the nose, but not too much in the flavor. Mm. No, it's there. It's there. It just it really it really blends in. It's quite subtle, which I always feel that when you have a spiced beer, you want it to be subtle. I think you know, if you have a spice that's really in your face, it tends to ruin the beer. I mean, this is supposed to be a beer and not a a, a vehicle for spice. I don't know. Yeah, my my first sip, I wasn't sure if I was on board, but uh, I think I might be. The juniper is a little bit bitter. This is a bit, it has a bitterness that you wouldn't normally expect from a Bach. Most of the box that I have had, box and double box, I'm a big fan of the style. They tend to be on the sweeter side. Even for me, I, I'm not a big fan of sweet beers. This is not as sweet. It has, it has a substantial bitterness, and it's a little bit different from hop bitterness. I don't know how to describe it. It's not astringent at all, but it's, uh, it's a different kind of bitterness. Mm. This caramel in there. And the, yeah, and the floral notes from the uh, from the juniper are definitely there. And then you have to, it's it's a nice. It, this is probably a little bit too cold, but it's not it's not straight out of the fridge. But I probably should have waited a few minutes longer for this. But uh, it's uh, it, it's it doesn't have a, a big uh, bite of carbonation. It's uh, probably. You know the the mouth feel is uh, it's, it's got texture, definitely has texture. It lingers a lingering aftertaste of caramel, and um, and yeah, the juniper probably it might be my imagination at this point because <laughs> I keep focusing on the juniper. But I think I yeah, it feels like it's there in the aftertaste. 
And you know, juniper is, is sort of uh, floor, floral. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it's it's hard to describe. It is floral. And if you haven't seen it, they're like... They're, they're, they're like cones, I guess, is, you know, they're like seeds or cones. Um, and they're like little, they look like little berries or like peppercorns or something like that. So when you're cooking with it, you grind it up in a, a, with mortar and you, you know, sprinkle it, or whatever you use, it. you boil it with your stock or something like that. Um, but this, yeah, but, and they do have a bitter taste. So the bittering, the, the, the juniper is... A bittering agent in this beer that's what the uh the brewery says and uh and yeah it definitely is and you know as the beer is warming up a little bit i'm starting to get the juniper through a little bit more it's a it's a nice character it is different and as they say as i said on the bottle you know it's like a traditional thing and that's all that's all well and good mm. Yeah, I, it's nice. I think I prefer, they, they do a double bock as well every Christmas. And um, I think I prefer that to this, to be fair. I think that's a better bock than this one. This is pretty similar. And if you're interested, it, it um, the, the base malt they use in this is Munich malt. Which stands to reason it's a Bach, you know, and um, and then they uh, uh, and actually it might be it might be the darker Munich variety if you're if you're familiar with different malts they have light Munich and dark Munich, but then but they might use Kara Munich as well I, I'm not sure uh, but that's getting into the specifics maybe a little bit too much, and I'm not getting a lot of hops, again, the juniper is coming through the malt is coming through, I couldn't if I had to guess. Which kinds of hops they use, couldn't tell you. But yeah, it's it's decent. I think this is this is more I think of an interesting attempt at using a traditional ingredient, a very Nordic ingredient. Juniper is very uh, popular with different types of game in the Nordic countries. I think as such, it's more interesting than actually the finished product. It's not, you know, it, it, it's a solid beer. Don't get me wrong. It's decent. It's very nice. It tastes okay, but I prefer their regular Bach to this. So to me, this is mainly about the interesting attempt at using uh, Juniper in a beer. So that's it for me for now. This was the beer that we that I tasted. If you can get it, and uh, uh, you know, if you taste it, let me know if you agree with my assessment of it. Um, as always, like and subscribe. And uh, if you're traveling to Iceland, you can have a beer tasting with me. Just go to beertour.is, and uh, I also have free walking tours at freewalkingtour.is, and. Um, yeah, keep in touch. Later.